Welcome to the NCAA Women's Selection Special, presented by Capital One. It's time, and the tension is palpable. These 32 teams have already punched tickets to the dance as our automatic bid, so tonight a bit of a formality, if you will. That means 36 at-large bids remain with 12 bubble teams waiting in angst. That empty bracket will be filled with 68 names. And when you find out with the rest of the world what your path to a championship looks like, you gather and you party. We've got cameras in over 60 locations as we find out together who is in. It's Selection Sunday. Y'all ready? Let's, Let's do it, it show. Yeah. Yeah. A season filled with will and intensity. Yeah. Now, it all goes up a notch. <laughs> The madness of March has arrived with a sense of urgency. The competition is fierce, but so are you. Strong drive. What a scoop. Give her the ball. You sacrifice your life for this game. What a play. That was nasty. The further you go, the hungrier you get. It's not how you start! It's how you want to finish! Yeah! And emotions will overflow. Myself, you're driven. You're strong. Right here is where you belong. There they are. The 12 members of the committee have been working, debating, examining enough data to make your head spin. Their work is complete for the 68 teams in the field. Their work just beginning. The goal, of course, to make it to the Final Four in Dallas and lifting up that beautiful girl right there in front of thousands of folks at the American Airlines Center. And it all starts right here. Officially welcome to the NCAA Women's Selection Special. I'll take this starting five over anybody. Well, in broadcasting, anyway, me and Charlie are kind of short. I'm Elle Duncan. I'm joined alongside Andrea Carter, who spent her time with the Lady Vols, appeared in two Elite Eights. Rebecca Lobo won a national championship with UConn. And my girl CP over here, the first and only Big Ten title. She coached Purdue to that back in 99. Charlie Cream, our resident bracketologist, who shockingly still has hair, despite the fact he should have been pulling it out over some of these storylines. So before we get to the reveal, what are you most interested in? Who are the number one seeds? Okay. I think we have six teams that actually qualify, but there can only be four. And I think it really comes down to that last one. Three teams we're looking at, Stanford, UConn, Iowa. I'm looking for who's going to be the bracket buster? Who is going to be the next Creighton that was a 10 seed that pulled off the upset? They upset Colorado, Iowa, and Iowa State. Somebody's going to spoil the party this year. I'm really interested to see where Notre Dame lands, especially with the uncertainty surrounding Olivia Miles and her ability to play. Remember, when she went down, she was leading Notre Dame in points, rebounds, assists, and steals. When Notre Dame lost in the semifinals of the ACC tournament, Tournament, they only scored 38 points. Which team are they? And my biggest thing when I'm looking at the storylines is the bubble teams. Which teams get in? Which teams were so close to getting in but just didn't make it specifically Oregon and Arkansas? Oregon, I know they have 14 losses, but none of them, in my opinion, are bad losses. Top 20 in the net. Top 20 in strength of schedule. Arkansas, they played LSU close. They've got the most top 100 wins out of the bubble teams. Will it be enough? to get in the tournament. That doesn't have to be rhetorical. We can actually answer that right now. Should we put some people out of their misery? I think we can start that. But first, a quick reminder this year and how all roads lead to Texas, because they do, but we're getting there a little differently than normal. Only two regional sites this year, not four. We've got Seattle, Washington, and Greenville, South Carolina. The four teams that are left standing will then head to Dallas, Texas for the final four. Semis are on March 31st on ESPN, and we will crown a national champion on April 2nd on ABC. And with that, we are ready to reveal our very first region. We're calling this one Greenville One, and it starts with our number one overall seed. And folks, this might be the least intriguing thing. We, I think we all knew we were going to land here. Your number one overall seed, South Carolina, and deservedly so, undefeated. Well, they have the reigning national player of the year in Aaliyah Boston. 
They are on a streak of winning 38 games in a row. They are number one in scoring margin and, and rebound margin. So with South Carolina, what's going to be important for them is that they are the team that can only beat them. They've got to come in with that mentality. They got to be dominant from start to finish in every game. Of course, they feature Aaliyah Boston as the one seed. They'll take on 16 seeded Norfolk State Spartans. Congratulations to the Spartans who are making their first tournament appearance since 2002. That's after getting their most wins in a season since the 95 96 season. We see you. I like the booth set up. I like sitting wings. in the booth. Everybody's go. eating. The yes. food looks good. Relax. Yeah, they're ready. They're it's ready. a whole vibe. They are ready to go. All right, now for your 8 9 matchup in the Greenville region number one. We've got the South Florida Bulls taking on the Marquette Golden Eagles, who have 20 plus wins in six of their last seven seasons, but have never made it past the second round of the tournament. I see you, Bulls. Okay. Good setup. They're ready. Nice setup here. Okay, how about your 4-13 matchup as we continue in the reveal? UCLA Bruins at your four seed. They'll take on 13-seeded Sacramento, Sacramento State Hornets. You see UCLA here, their 18th NCAA tournament appearance, first since 2021. Look at the excitement. Got some dancing going on Some here. dancing. Oh, Are we jumping in a dancing. boot? Because that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And there's Sac State. Where's the dancing? We put, there we go. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they now go. they know. Is, there's a little bit of a delay, and then they realize they're on camera, and they're like, let's show out. We see you, ladies. Congratulations. Is that an old school video camera? Did y'all see that? It looked like a little handheld camera. I think they had a Are you old enough there? to know about I, old school? I, listen, I'm coming up on 30. Don't sleep on me. <laughs> <laughs> Best years are right here in these 30s. Don't sleep on that 5-12 matchup as we continue. We've got number five, Oklahoma will be facing number 12, Portland. And there we go, the Sooners. Right, shooters shoot. That's Three shooters point shoot. shooters. Second leading scoring team in the entire country, the Sooners. I've got my eye on them. A little up and down, but they can put it in the hoop. And how about those Portland Pilots? There we go, 23 wins, most in a season since 1996. They're looking for their first win in the NCAA tournament when they face Oklahoma. Congratulations, lady. All right, we now make it as we just finished up our Greenville top to the Greenville bottom regional bracket. We continue with the 314 matchup. That will be at number three, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish taking on number 14, Southern Utah. There we go. And this is the, the team that I, that is so curious to me and how they can perform. I'm looking for boots, Drea, and yeah. if anyone is We're dancing, all standing. Yeah. everybody okay? Where, is everybody, everybody good? They said everybody stay seated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody stand up. Look, they're, they're laughing. They they're know. laughing. They know. <laughs> Of course, we're referring to Olivia Miles and whether she'll be available. There's Southern Utah, them Thunderbirds. First NCAA tournament appearance. Congratulations to the Thunderbirds. They are dancing in Greenville. We continue on with our 6-11 matchup. At 6, we've got the Creighton Blue Jays. Last year's Cinderella team, if you will. And... They'll be playing the winner of the play-in game, the Illinois Fighting Illini or Mississippi State. Yeah, Creighton, a team that is known for lighting up the three-point line. They could probably hit three sitting right there in those seats. <laughs> but talk to me nice, Sam Purcell and Mississippi State. That play-in game, I love it, but I also hate it. Shauna Green should be in the Naismith Coach of the Year conversation. Illinois, Mississippi State, that one's going to be a game I definitely have my eye on. Shauna Green's first season there in Illinois. And Come on now. Potentially dancing. We get you to the 215 matchup. Number two seeded Maryland. The Terps will face the 15 seeded Holy Cross Crusaders. Subtle flex with the Terps. Yeah, and Maryland is one of the most improved teams throughout the course of this season. They are undersized, but they can rely on their length and athleticism on the perimeter. And you see those Holy Cross Crusaders. They're dancing for the first time since 2007. Riding a six-game win streak as well. They'll face the Terps in the first round. We continue. We're just plugging right along with our 7-10 matchup. Your seven-seeded Arizona Wildcats will be facing 10-seeded West Virginia Mountaineers. There we go. We see you. A D Barnes crew, 10th NCAA tournament appearance. A team record fifth straight 20 win season. Of course, led by Kate Reese. They're their all Pac-12 selection, and they're facing West Virginia in the first round. And that is your bottom. So we have revealed the first of four 
brackets. You guys ready? Okay, your biggest takeaway as you sort of as we look at the top of the bracket, South Carolina and the path. Now that you've sort of seen what the rest of the bracket looks like, what are your thoughts as you digest? It seems like the committee does this every year. There's an interesting rematch of something that happened earlier in the year in South Carolina played UCLA early. UCLA was leading at the half. But here is the secret sauce that Don Staley has. When you get off starting slow, you have Aaliyah Boston gives you a double-double, and then she can go get her a little Camila Cardoso gives her a double-double as well. And if this region goes chalk, what's interesting is the potential another rematch, South Carolina and Maryland. This is the, a matchup that happened early in the season. Keep in mind, Diamond Miller didn't play in that game. Both teams are much improved since then, but in particular, Maryland really found their way as the season went on. And here's the thing when I think about South Carolina and potential rematches. So far this season, though, they've been better against teams the second time around, right? They go to overtime against Ole Miss they see Ole Miss the second time around they dice up that zone like they're eating it for dinner and then they see Tennessee they see Tennessee the first time win by 13 and then without Kiera Fletcher they're able to beat Tennessee by 16 so those teams UCLA Maryland anybody that's facing South Carolina the second time get a little creative because they seem to be better the next time they see this them. is a team when they get tournament time they're on a mission that's why they turn it they up turn it up you got to get a little creative you talk about their dominance there's only been a handful of teams that have even kept the loss within single digits five games that have even kept it within single digits you guys ready to reveal our next region all right, all right. we'll go. stay with the greenville region greenville two is what they're calling this again because we've got two locations now for your regional so we will reveal our 116 matchup in the greenville two region congratulations your one seed goes to the Indiana Hoosiers. There they are. Ninth NCAA tournament appearance. Charlie, your thoughts on Indiana getting that this one seed? Is a great offensive team. Mackenzie Holmes, one of the most efficient post players in the country, shoots at almost 70% for the field. Grace Berger is just super, super clutch. Surround those two with a bunch of good shooters. And I think this Indiana team has Final Four written out all over them. They've had a great season and they really never have an off night. A few minutes here or there, but they're very, very consistent. You mentioned Grace Berger. She came back for her fifth year because she said she wanted to do something big with this team, and here they sit. The one seed they'll face on Tennessee Tech, Golden Eagles, or the Monmouth Hawks. Monmouth making a lot of noise right now as well as we check in on Tennessee Tech. He'll be in that first four game for a chance to play Indiana. As we get you ready for your 8-9 matchup in Greenville 2, your 8 seed Oklahoma State Cowgirls. They'll be facing the 9th seeded Miami Hurricanes. We see you, Cowgirls. They kind of all got in formation and stood at exactly the same time. <laughs> First 20 win seasons since 2017-18. And Miami, bienvenido a Miami. Just super jelly because it's definitely warmer wherever you are. <laughs> Look at all in shorts, all comfortable. <laughs> Miami exactly. Some, Miami's had some quality wins this season over tough opponents. The ACC was a really competitive conference. All right, as we continue in the Greenville 2 region, we look at the 4-13 matchup. Your four-seeded Villanova Wildcats will face 13-seeded Cleveland State Vikings for Villanova. Rebecca, their 13th NCAA tournament appearance, second straight. And this is a Villanova team you see that has six losses on this season. Three of those came in against Connecticut in Big East play. Of course, Villanova led by their senior, Maddie Segrist. She leads the nation in scoring at just under 29 points per game. This young lady went off for 50 in a game against Seton Hall. On this season, she scored at least 20 points in every single game, every night game plan geared to slowing her down. No one's been able to. How many, Rebecca, say that one more time? Against Seton Hall? How many? 50. My goodness. 50. Wow. And shout out to Cleveland State, their first 30 win season in team history, just the third Horizon League team to win 30 games. You ladies will be dancing. Congratulations, as we will see you in Greenville. Your 5-12 matchup as we continue Washington State Cougars facing the Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles. I'm telling you, you better watch out for Washington State. They Biggest walk, fan here, CC. Hey, they walk straight through that Pac-12 tournament. They are playing with a lot of confidence in Charlize Liga Walker. She is really shooting the ball well, distributing well. They go as she goes. You mentioned those Eagles and momentum riding a 14 game win streak as they head into the tournament. That's the ninth longest active win streak in D1. So they've got momentum on their side and they'll face Washington State in the first round. We continue with our Greenville 2 
It's our 3 and 14 matchup. The third seeded LSU Tigers will be facing the 14 seeded Hawaii Rainbow Wahina. LSU has got to really take a hard look at what happened in the SEC tournament. Can they bounce back? They have one of the best centers in the country in Angel Reese and a true point guard in Alexis Morse to get things going. And SEC Freshman of the Year, Flaje Johnson, can she get the flow going on the court as well as she does in the rapid studio? Bad Wi-Fi. That was a really dumb Okay, yeah, it was. We got <laughs> it. Yeah. I, I'm kind of glad a little bit that the reaction was more to them being in and out. We'll see what they can do. And there's Hawaii. I mentioned Miami. Hello, Hawaii. Uh, as they get ready. <laughs> they came back, by the way, from a 15-point deficit to beat UC Santa Barbara in the Big West Tournament Championship game. Congratulations to Hawaii, our Big West champion. Our 6-11 matchup features the number six seeded Michigan Wolverines taking on the 11 seeded UNLV Lady Rebels. Okay, Michigan stands up. Their second straight 20 win season. Finished the season two and four in their last six game, but three of those losses coming to AP ranked teams. So they are battle tested. As for UNLV, we see ya. They're entering the tournament on a 22 game win streak. Single season record with 31 wins, certainly the pride of Las Vegas. Congratulations to the Lady Rebels. And in our 215 matchup, we've got the number two seeded Utah Utes taking on number 15 Gardner Webb running Bulldogs. You see the Utes there celebrating. Oh, today. and we, in honor of Holly Rowe, the great Holly <laughs> Rowe, we got to give some love to the Utes. Alyssa Feely, 20 points per game. She's a bucket. They won the Pac 12 regular season. They make eight threes per game, but they do it together. 18 assists per game. Holly Rose said that team was slept on. We weren't talking about them enough. Utah, stand up. She absolutely did. Uh, as you see, Gardner Webb there. A lot of gritty, I see. Okay. Good to know. Congratulations. You will be dancing as you are going to face Utah in the first round. Alex Fuller, former Lady Vols. Yes, I hate yeah. Gardner Webb. Yep. And finally, our 7 10 matchup in Greenville 2. Number seven seeded NC State Wolfpack will face a Princeton team that's had 14 straight wins. You see NC State celebrating. Okay. Where is everybody? I was going to say, they kept everyone in the back. They're like, we want the ladies in the front. We want them there. Oh, there's <laughs> and, Princeton. There and we there go. There is Princeton, your Ivy League champ. Won four of the five Ivy League tournaments that have been held. Certainly the pride of the Ivy League. Their first round matchup, NC State and Salt Lake City. Uh, so there it is. We have officially revealed the Greenville regions one and two. You were joking, Drea, earlier that this is like the what is this like the Big Sean uh, bracket, if you will. Last week took an L, but uh -oh. next week I bounce bounced back. back. Yeah, this is the bracket <laughs> that people got bounced in their conference tournament. If you look at all the single-digit seeds, only two of them made it to their conference tournament championship. So this is the team that listen, we got bounced. Can we bounce back in the big dance? And, and when I look at this region, it is uh, experience in the tournament is so important. When yeah. you look at the one seed Indiana last year, Sweet 16, two years ago, Elite, Elite Eight, they have the experience of being in this moment. Look at what South Carolina did last year. They got bounced in the SEC tournament. They lost themselves all the way to get a national championship. And lost it. So <laughs> it don't mean nothing yeah. if you get bounced out of your conference tournament. One of those double-digit seeds we didn't really talk about, Florida Gulf Coast, they can really shoot it. They beat Virginia Tech last year in the yeah. first round. All they have to do is wake up in beast mode. Yeah, I was going to have you. That was good. I didn't see where you It was more there. Big I Sean. It's yeah, fine. Okay. Okay. We've, like got much, we've got much more revealing. Were you ready for that, Rebecca? I, was that? Big Sean. Rebecca's the one that told us to go with Big Sean. She gave me the reference. Um, <laughs> so much fan. more as we continue the Seattle to Seattle region. <laughs> She's ready for the Seattle region. We'll go a little Nirvana there, if we will. <laughs> there right? we go. There are so many more teams waiting to have their names called as we are live at over 60 locations. The NCAA a women's selection special continues after this, presented by Capital One. Stick around. We want to win a national championship. We're going to do it. History for the Hokies. Even when it's the Dukes are going dancing. St. Louis, you're going dancing for the first time. March is here. Thank you, Coop Nation. Back here in the studio for the NCAA women's selection special. So many teams, 68 teams vying for an opportunity to also call themselves national champions. We have already revealed the entire Greenville bracket. Are you guys ready to move on to yes. Seattle? Yes. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it.
And all right, and we will start with your 116 matchup. Top seed for Seattle three, the Virginia Tech Hokies, who you've been caping for them for a while. When did I start talking about Virginia Tech being Months a sleeper ago. team? Yes. Being a sleeper team for a one seed, it was yeah. quite some time ago. They got the two-time ACC Player of the Year, Elizabeth Kitley. Yes, they lost to Miami, they lost to Duke, but they avenged those losses in the ACC tournament run. They've won 11 in a row. They are hot and Elizabeth Kitley. I'm going to get into Elizabeth Kitley a little bit later in the show with an actual breakdown, but let me just tell you, she is a bucket. That one foot fadeaway is extremely hard to guard. They've got the inside play. They've got the outside play. They space the floor for her to operate. And when she can't score, she finds her teammates to knock down threes very, very high on the Hokies right now. Virginia Tech gets their first ACC tournament championship in program history, and they get that one seed they'll face, 16-seeded Chattanooga Mox, who in their first season under Sean Poppy are making their 16th tournament up here. His first 20-win season, lone tournament win coming back in 2004, so they are looking for a huge, a huge upset in the first round as they face the Hokies in your 8-9 matchup in Seattle. We've got eight-seeded USC Trojans taking on number nine South Dakota State Jackrabbits. So we take a peek. There we go. Hey, Drea, you're young. What is this? <laughs> Why does everybody think I'm so young? I'm all on it. It's on a young friend. It's my second time saying I'm almost 30. You've got, okay, and there we go. This yeah, okay, this out. I know. This is okay. clapping. Really, now, what dance is this, Rebecca? What dance should I know about here with South Dakota? Uh, they're not dancing. I mean, there we dancing, go. Do your jackrabbit. But. <laughs> they can hear us, so we can just sort of instruct them on what to do. Congratulations to both teams, as that's your 8 9 matchup in Seattle Regional 3. For your 4 13 matchup, We've got the four-seeded Tennessee Lady wow. Volunteers. You say, wow, Drea. Rebecca, what do you make here of Tennessee being a four-seed? Well, they, to me, watching them play, have played like one of the top 16 teams in the country this season. This has been an interesting year for Tennessee, up and down. They played a really tough schedule, but they are led by two players who are so difficult to defend in Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson. Certainly St. Louis are about to learn that. Their first NCAA tournament appearance. They made the NIT tournament four of their previous seven seasons. So congratulations, ladies. You are dancing for the first time. That your 4-13 matchup. For your 5-12 matchup in Seattle 3, we've got fifth-seeded Iowa State Cyclones taking on number 12 Toledo Rockets. Bill Finley and Ashley Jones have led the Cyclones to winning the Big 12, 12 Tournament Championship. This is how they score. They're either going to make threes, they're going to get layups, or they're going to get to the free throw line. And they got weapons all around. Modern day analytics at yeah, work right there. And how about Toledo? They've had a rocket ship of a season. 16 game win streak tied for their longest win streak since I was a senior in high school. And I can tell you I'm a lot older than Drea, who claims <laughs> that she's not old. It's time for me to go. Yeah, exactly. Congratulations, Iowa State and Toledo. You are dancing. To the bottom of the Seattle Regional 3 bracket, we've got your 314 matchup. Third, third seeded Ohio State Buckeyes. They're taking on number 14, James Madison. As we react, there we go. Okay, is it a business trip or are they just now hearing us, Ohio State? Ohio State Buckeyes, knew they were getting in. Apparently, they sure. are just hey, ready like to start playing. You better hold on to your purse it's coming. and play it's in coming. Ohio State because yeah. they are still waiting to happen. There you go. <laughs> I like this. It's a business trip for them. They're like, fine, we got a couple of balloons and some water bottles. We're fine. Locked uh, in. It is their 27th NCAA tournament appearance, so certainly they are locked in. For your 6-11 matchup in the Seattle region, We've got the North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the winner of the Purdue Boilermakers or the St. John's Red Storm. I think North Carolina might be a little under here. I had them a little, a little higher in the bracket. I think they could do some damage. They're healthy. They weren't always healthy in February. They've got all their pieces back. I think North Carolina is a potential, a little bit higher seed that could move on and do some damage. Certainly, you know about Purdue CP as you boiler see them there. Up. Yeah, Let's boiler go. up. Uh, the only, first and only Big Ten national champion was Purdue back when you were there. They're back in the tournament for the first time since 2017. And St. John's, you see him there. First 20 win seasons since 2016. Congratulations. Oh, did you see the Dougie? I know you know the Dougie. Though. He had a Dougie. There you know I know go. the Dougie. There we That's go. right up my alley. I'm so old, it's <laughs> called the Douglas. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Here Charlie, we go. No. <laughs> All right, as we move right along, saved by the reveal. Your 215 matchup in Seattle 3, the two seated Yukon Huskies will face the 15-seeded Vermont Catamounts. UConn's a two? 
UConn is in season two. Clearly, this is something that we debated. Uh, we do, as you look here at Vermont celebrating more gritties. I'm loving things that I can understand. 17 game win streak for Vermont. We'll certainly get at, into UConn and sort of the big picture look there. As we continue to reveal the Seattle regional bracket, we've got our 7 10 matchup next. The seven seeded Baylor Bears will take on the 10 seeded Alabama Crimson Tide. That's your 7 10 matchup. There we go. A little reaction there from Bama. Okay. Hey. There we go. There we go. There we go. So congratulations to Baylor and Alabama. Who's getting the final one seed? Something that we have been debating time and time and time again. All will reveal itself as we've got the final bracket reveal on the NCAA Selection Special forthcoming. Stick around to find out who gets that final one seed. Is it Iowa? Is it Stanford? Is it Nader? ESPN Tournament Challenge is back. The number one bracket game. Download the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. Scan the QR code to sign up. As soon as the men's and women's fields are announced, you can fill out your brackets for a chance to win a share of $75,000. The men's brackets are already open. The women's will open at 9 Eastern, and that is, of course, because we are not done actually revealing the full field of 68. So to do that, we're back on camera and we're ready. Again, so much intrigue on who would get that final one seed, and we are about to reveal it as we reveal the Seattle 4 bracket and your one seed in Seattle 4, the Stanford Cardinal facing Southern Jaguars or Sacred Heart Pioneers. And this is a Stanford team that stumbled in the Pac-12 tournament, but they are dangerous, they are deep, and they have the experience of being to the Final Four the last couple of years, including a national championship two years ago, led by that young woman, Haley Jones. Cameron Brink having an outstanding year on both ends of the floor as well. They have many shooters, they've got size, They've got depth. Stanford, when playing their best basketball, is going to be a tough out. When you say experience, you mean 99 NCAA tournament wins? Is that the kind of experience you're talking about? That's, that's the kind. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, Southern Jaguars or Sacred Heart Pioneers as we check in. Congratulations to the Southern Jaguars representing the SWAC who are looking for their first NCAA tournament win as a conference and Sacred Heart in their 10th season with Jessica Minetti back in the tournament for the first time since 2012. And your 8-9 matchup, we've got Ole Miss taking on Gonzaga, Drea. Oh, I'm excited about this match. I love the 8-9 matchups in general, but we've got to give some credit to Coach Yo at Ole Miss. No Shakira Austin, who was dynamic in the WNBA, no problem. She's got transfers that come in. Maya Taylor, Markeisha Davis, Angel Baker is a bucket. Ole Miss, they're ready to go. And you see Gonzaga, them Bulldogs, they're ready too. Oh, they get the cute factor too. Another <laughs> gritty, but this time from a little boy. We love that. Only West Coast team, by the way, with multiple players averaging over 16 points a game. They are deep. We look at our 5-12 matchup in Seattle 4. Our 4-13 matchup is going to be the Texas Longhorns taking on the East Carolina Pirates. You see Texas there with Vic Schaefer. Always in a blazer. Always in a blazer. He hasn't thrown it yet. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't come off yet. He hasn't come off yet. And Rory Harmon there, your Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Yes, the gritty. Okay, yeah, East Carolina. There's a lot of gritty happening right now. It's it's basically the narrative of the show, taking on the East Carolina Pirates. 23 mitt wins, most since 2009 and 10. They've got oh, a chance. Oh, they're chance, they're they win. chanting. They win so season. far. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we've, like got, we've got a net, a net necklace. They're doing it all. Congratulations. As we look now at our 5-12 matchup in the Seattle 4 region. The fifth seeded Louisville Cardinals will take on the 12th seeded Drake Bulldogs. Okay, Louisville. We talked about Louisville defensively. What are they like compared to last season? The defense has been something that they have to get going. And the Drake team, that's exciting. Yeah. They can shoot it, but that's going to be good offense against good defense going against each other. And Mikasa Robinson moved into the starting lineup for the Louisville Cardinal, and the defense got better. Is she similar to? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't and how about Drake riding a five-game winning streak? Not exactly starting from the bottom, but they're here. Okay. Uh, as we continue with great, the huh? bottom of the Seattle Regional Four, I'm just here for the bad dad jokes. It's fine. We take a look now at your 3-14 matchup. Number three, Duke, taking on number 14, Iona. Another one of those defensive teams, Duke. That's how Carol Lawson has had success in the ACC this season. It's built on the defensive end. 
All right, we check in now on your 6-11 matchup in the Seattle Four region. Six-seeded Colorado Buffaloes will take on number 11, Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Charlie has this, and he'll explain a little later as a potential Cinderella story, Middle Tennessee. As we take a look there at Colorado, the Buffaloes, 23 wins, oh, mostly for team. Well, MTSU, MTSU is a team that could pull off an upset. Carolyn talked about that Cinderella team. Who could it be? They can shoot it, baby. It could be this team the right here. They can shoot it. Yeah, they're also riding a 10-game win streak. Shoot or shoot. As we take a look at your 215 matchup in the regional, Seattle regional, two-seeded Iowa Hawkeyes. CP, a lot well, of debate about them being a one seed. Well, Caitlin Clark, she will earn your respect. If you didn't put respect on the Iowa Hawkeyes, giving them a one seed added two, they're going to come in, they're going to shoot it. We saw how determined they were when game day went to Iowa yeah. City. They're going to carry that, carry that on through the tournament. Those fans were amazing. They were Those great. Those fans were incredible. So much they're, fun. Yeah, they're absolutely incredible. That year, 215 matchup. And in your 7-10 matchup in Iowa City, number seven seeded Florida State taking on number 10, Georgia. Hi, hi. Look, Coach Abe's got a defense that's really hard for teams to figure out. They, she matches up well. Diamond Battles is excitement, and it's not for making buckets, but getting steals for the Georgia Bulldogs. That's her right there, standing up, dancing hey. in the middle. Yep, hey. there we go. I said it's great. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, jo okay, let's go. Only team with more appearances in the NCAA tournament, Tennessee. Look at Georgia stand up that year's 7-10 matchup. As the full bracket has been revealed, let's take a look at our bracket tips presented by Nissan. Congratulations to all 68 teams. Since the tournament expanded to 64 teams in 94, top three seeds are 335-1 and one in the first round. That lone loss belongs to one seed at Stanford who fell to 16 seed at Harvard back in 1998. Each of the last 10 titles have been won by a one seed, and top three seeds have won all 40 of the national championships. Brackets are officially open, so scan the QR code to download the ESPN Tournament Challenge app and make sure to fill out your brackets right now. And if you feel like it, you could do them in, but like what else? Uh, all right, <laughs> more ahead here on the NCAA Women's Selection Special. We will talk with the number one team in the land as they look to be just the 10th team in history to win a national championship as an undefeated team coming in. Aaliyah Boston and Don Staley are standing by. Tish, I think you played really well this entire so tournament. And honestly, we probably wouldn't be here without you. And I do think that you deserve to be an all-star. And so I'm just going to give you mine because it is all the NCAA Women's Selection Special. You know, South Carolina's Aaliyah Boston has accomplished pretty much everything in the sport. She won a national title last year. She swept Wooden and Naismith Player of the Year awards a year ago, also taking Naismith Defensive Player of the Year honors. And when it comes to the SEC, just way too much hardware. Look at that trophy case, two-time SEC Player of the Year, four-time SEC Defensive Player of the Year. She and her head coach, Don Staley, caught with our Courtney Lyle. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Elle, thank you so much. Yeah, Aaliyah's trophy case, really impressive. I have two goats here, not just one, but two. A pretty, pretty fun day on selection show. So Dawn Staley and Aaliyah Boston, thank you so much for the time. Uh, Coach, your thoughts on your portion of the bracket, seeing it for the first time? Um, I, I like it. There's some familiarity. Uh, we got to take care of Norfolk State um, and then, you know, see where that takes us. But I, I don't want to I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but um, Sometimes when you're in tournament setting like this, it's always it's always a good thing to, to have played someone. And we got a couple of teams that we played this year, and uh, we won't shortchange the scout for sure. Elia, I know how close this team is. So what has the conversation been like between you and your teammates this week as we've gone from the SEC tournament and now finally getting the bracket today? Yeah, we were talking today, um, and we were just saying that we need to be ready. Um, it's it's here that the time is now, and that we just have to be ready to compete once we step on that floor. Um, South Carolina looking to be the fourth team to repeat as national champions. Dawn, for you, what has it been like seeing this team last year win it? And now what's the difference this year in this group? Uh, I, the biggest difference is um, they're, they're now embracing in a different and a more poised and calm way of having a target on their backs. Like last year, was, it was the target with pressure. This year, it's a target with pressure, but the, the, 
We've already been through it. So this team, once they've been through something, they're they're able to, you know, balance out what they've been through to facing what they're they're currently facing, and they've done it um, all year long. It didn't take a loss for us to really understand and learn from the lessons of a of a close game. Um, but now we find ourselves in a position of we don't want to lose. We can't afford to lose at this point. So we just have to be who we've been all season long. Yeah, Leah, how has that experience helped you in having been there before? Yeah, um, it helps a lot, um, especially just because a lot of, you know, our team, you know, a lot of us came back this year, and so we have the feel of what it takes to win a national championship, what it takes to be in close games but get over that hump. Um, and experience, I mean, it just does help, and I think we're doing a great job of bringing up um, the underclassmen with it, and they're ready to rock and roll. Um, Bree Beal had an awesome tweet after the SEC Tournament Championship game where she said, this team genuinely wants to see every person succeed. Uh, how true is that? And especially, I mean, we, we saw you give up your SEC All-Tournament team trophy to Letitia and me here. I mean, how close is this group? Yeah, I mean, we're very close. And just like we said, we want to see each other win. And I think that's something that's the basis of our whole team, our whole relationship, just wanting to see everybody do well. And for Tish, I mean, it was just well-deserved. She competed. She played um, really well the entire tournament. And so it was just well-deserved. Uh, Don, what's it been like for you to watch the senior class and specifically this one right here, Aaliyah Boston, over the last four years? What's been the best part? I mean, um, I mean, the best part is not not only do they win. I mean, they they are like super human beings. Like, I, <laughs> and I said this like we we've never their class zero like like low 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 maintenance, high performing. Um, no extra. There's nothing extra about them. They are, they are competitors in the classroom. They're competitors on the court. Um, they got some some incredible parents who have steered them in the right direction. So our job is is easy. Now, what's going to come after them? Okay, I got to keep. It's going to be great. I gotta, I gotta it's going to be hat great. On because yep. because the grades will be coming in. No, thick. it's going to be great. We speak it into existence. Okay. 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 There you Thank go. You. I like that. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> uh, Aliyah, Don talks a lot about being a dream merchant. How has she been a dream merchant for you? Um, you know, she's just one. Just always been a great supporter, a great leader, somebody that I can always look at. Um, and you know, coach is somebody that speaks life into all of us. Just every single day, she speaks life. She just talks about how successful we're going to. Be the work that we put in, you know, the basketball gods and God Himself will give it back to us. Um, and she just continues to do that. So it's been really nice. Yeah, we know there's so many key pieces in this group, but we didn't get to see Kiara Fletcher in the SEC tournament championship game, their starting point guard. Do we think she'll be available? What's her status? Um, she's day to day. Hasn't hasn't practiced um, since we came back from the break, but we haven't practiced a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. um, got a day off tomorrow and get back in the, in the swing of things on Tuesday. So she said Tuesday is her day, and we'll see how she does. Um, but every day she's getting healthy and healthier. We're going to put uh, Craig Oates, our, our athletic <laughs> trainer, to the test. Craig's yeah, Craig, yeah, come Craig, yeah, Craig. Yeah, oh, he will. I feel like it. <laughs> Aaliyah, what's it going to take to repeat as national champions? Just being ready to compete, um, you know, the margin of error just gets smaller and smaller each step that we go. But honestly, just staying locked in, just making sure that we've continued to play who, wh how we have been this entire time and just staying true to us. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you in action on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Elle, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Courtney. You don't win 44 straight regular season games without knowing who you are. Who is South Carolina, Rebecca? Well, it starts on the defensive end. The last couple of years, they've been the most imposing defensive team in the country. The way that they can hold their opponents down, their opponents only averaging 51 points per game, only shooting 31% from the field, and also nine blocks per game. They anchor themselves on the defensive end um, of the floor and then offensive rebounding, 49% of their their misses they go and get it's incredible and, and that lends to the, the amount of size they have up and down the roster and it's not just the starting five they've got a bench that will produce as well 36.7 points per game coming from the bench they're also getting 23 rebounds per game coming off the bench so when you look at okay they weren't they wear down that first string that you got out there. They got a whole nother group that they can come in, bring at you, and they just wear teams down. And they're just they're better offensively as well. And you look at the South Carolina team in the SEC tournament in the Arkansas game, you take away a couple options, Victoria Saxton lights you up for 19 points. In the Ole Miss game, you take away options, Letitia Mehir lights you up for 17 points and seven assists. They've just got more options 
on the offensive side, so they're better last year. In the you know intention of having some options and not just going, it's South Carolina versus the field. Let's get it to Charlie, who's going to sort of go through their bracket and lay out what their journey could potentially look like. Yeah, South Carolina. It's, it's set up nicely, I think. Dawn Staley mentioned that the, she didn't mind the matchups, and, and I, I, I think she's in pretty good shape. This South Florida Marquette game, let, let's, just, let's just say South Florida wins it. But both Marquette and South Florida don't physically ma- – nobody physically matches up with South Carolina. But I think this would be a good matchup for South Carolina to kind of dominate on the boards. And then if you've got, say, by Chalk, Oklahoma, and, and UCLA – Two teams that I think South Carolina can also put the clamps on defensively, and and that puts South Carolina, they playing these games in, in Columbia, mind you, puts them into the Sweet 16. All right, Charlie, maybe the easiest decision for the committee was who was going to be the one seed South Carolina coming up. We will actually talk to the committee, pick their brain on the decisions that they landed at, so tweet us if you want to know why wasn't I high? I'm just kidding. I'm not going to relay any of your tweets. As we continue to show you celebration at Selection Sunday, our favorite time of the year, as we are officially a starting starting our dance. Well, they're starting now, but this week, it's all roads leading to Dallas. More on the other side. And we're joined now by Lisa Peterson, who is the chair of the Selection Committee and joining us from Indianapolis. Thanks so much for that, Lisa. Just treetops, what was the most hotly debated thing today and the last couple of days? Well, that's a tough question. I would say we spent a lot of time on a variety of things, certainly that number one line and making sure that we had the right 16 teams that we're hosting. But then it also goes to the last teams that are in and the first four teams that are out. You know, you want to make sure that you get that right. So there were a lot of things, but I would say probably the number one line um, was the most. Well, Lisa, that just leads me right into my question for you. When you're looking at that one line, what gave Stanford the edge over Connecticut when you were trying to decide maybe between Connecticut being a one seed? What gave Stanford the edge and being that last one? I think the the key factor for a lot of folks was the 20 wins in the top 100 for Stanford. They had a great season throughout, and just that one defined moment may have been what it was for them to put them on the line. But again, there's 12 people with varying opinions as to what is most important to them, and when you put that in, you know, to all of that, that's what we came out with. Notre Dame's such an interesting team to me because of the uncertainty of Olivia Miles. How do you handle a situation like that one when you're not sure uh, whether a, a big player is going to be able to participate in the tournament? Well, Rebecca, we take what information we have in front of us. And at the time, we are being told that we're, it's uncertain as to if Olivia's coming back, but it didn't say that she wasn't coming back. So that's what we had to go with. We know that they got beat you know, pretty soundly in that game against Louisville, so that certainly factored into their seed. But we have to go on the assumption that she's coming back because we weren't told any different. Lisa, you have 16 teams that are very happy to be hosting the first round in the NCAA tournament. What was it that went in to decide, uh, I think, Tennessee may have been your last one. You had North Carolina that was on the cusp. What made the deciding uh, decision for the Lady Vols to host? For the Lady Vols, they haven't lost to anyone besides South Carolina since February 6th, and they really challenged themselves in the non-conference. I think their strength of schedule was four overall, and they had struggles in the beginning with their variety of lineups. But the way that they're playing right now and getting into that conference tournament, we felt that that was what made them deserving of hosting. Well, certainly uh, it has all come down to this. Lisa Peterson, thank you so much for joining us and and putting yourself on the hot seat for our questions. Thank you to the entire committee for that field that was just revealed. But there's so many questions that need to be answered and we're running out of time, so we're going to rapid fire style get through so many subjects. We'll close things out on the other side. Stick around as the selection special continues. Welcome back. Can I just, can we take a deep breath? No. We're I mean, we're not even on the committee, and it's like, oh, my goodness. We have just revealed all 68 teams in the NCAA Women's Tournament. And now, because, as we tend to do, we're going to do a little rapid fire so that we can actually get through some more subjects that we didn't have an opportunity Ooh. to do. Are you ready? Fire so go. They don't know what these questions are. Okay, here we go. We'll start right here. Big Ten team with the best path. Oh, big Big Ten team with the best path. Hmm. I like Indiana. Okay. Region that you don't want to be in. Greenville one, South Carolinas. Unless you're South Carolina, then you're happy about your region. <laughs> then you love that. Uh, toughest road ahead. Toughest road ahead. I think it's Virginia Tech. They're in the same bracket with UConn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
sleeper or Cinderella? What's, what, what's your biggest sleeper? Uh, my biggest sleeper team, uh, MTSU. In Middle Tennessee City mm -hmm. is your mm -hmm. biggest sleeper, okay. Sleeper team. How about you? My sleeper team? Yeah. Oh, we know, that's my Cinderella team. Okay. MTSU. Are they different? Well, <laughs> is the sleeper different than a Cinderella? I think so. Rapid fire. It is exactly. Right? We really are doing are a lot different? of like debating this. Okay. All right. Okay. Who do you think is the player of the year? In the country? Yes. I'm going to go Caitlin Clark right now. Caitlin Clark. Coach. I want that question. Oh, who do you think is the player of the year? Aaliyah Boston. Okay. It's going to be between them two again. Stands to reason coach of the year. Coach of the year? Um, That's not a rapid fire question. You gotta let. Yeah, that I, mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, South Carolina's undefeated. It's not Staley. Exactly. Okay. What are you thinking about? Yeah. All right, breakout star we might see in this tournament. Um, maybe Maddie Segrist. Ooh, Maddie not a lot of people have been able to lay eyes on Maddie yeah, Segrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could be the one. You want a hard hitting question, CP? Give it Who's to me. Who's the worst mascot in college? Oh, the worst. <laughs> Dude, I just did a commercial like with an okra. I love Purdue P. Come on now. All right. That's the best. That's, you know what's the best? This crew. So much so that they're <laughs> going to take this show over to ESPNU where we'll continue to debate the, what the committee did and the full field. For right now, we get you over to the NBA and the Knicks Lakers. Thanks for joining us.